All right, so welcome everybody in person online. And so we're so happy you joined us. And uh, this, is, this is session seven in our class, Indwelling Life, Power in You. And I think you're going to find this uh, session very encouraging, very, very encouraging. I want to, uh, it's very much encouraged me. It's amazing what God has done. It's amazing what God has already done for us by the Spirit. And uh, I want to start by reading a scripture. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. And uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, Paul is writing to the Ephesians because they have a treasure in them, but they don't know they have a treasure in them. And he realizes, okay, the Ephesians don't see the power that's in them. And this is what this session's about. It's about God's power in you. And he realizes, okay, they don't, they don't see this. I'm in prayer. Paul's praying. This is actually a prayer. I would pray this over yourself. I pray this over the people you influence. But he's praying in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, and he's saying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now, this is verse 19 is where I really want us to focus on. Paul says, and that you would know what is the surpassing greatness. Okay, catch that. that you would know what is the surpassing greatness. Now, he's going to define in a minute what the surpassing greatness looks like. But he says, of his power, now, my translation says toward us, but I think I, I just in studying this in the Greek and all this, I think a better translation is in us, that the, of the surpassing greatness of his power in us who believe. Now, faith is what activates the power of God that is already in you. If you don't believe, you will not have the power, of, even though the power of God that is in you, if you don't believe or if you're ignorant of that, you will not operate in that power. And I'm really talking today about the power to live like Christ. I'm not talking about the power for outward miracles. That would be a different subject, okay? I'm not talking about the power to prophesy and move in the gifts of the Spirit. I'm talking about the power of God's inward power. Now, I believe it includes all of that, but I'm really looking at the power to live like Jesus Christ. That's really the focus of this class Although all the others, I've you know, prophesying, moving in the gifts of the Spirit, all that would apply for sure. But I'm really focused on all, you know, sometimes you think power and you only think miracles, you think deliverance, but you don't, really, you don't really think the power to overcome your flesh, the power to overcome you, the power to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. So Paul says, I'm praying for you to have revelation. The surpassing greatness. In other words, your mind cannot conceive or fathom the power that is already inside of you if you're born again. I want you to catch this. He goes on to describe, okay, he says, the surpassing greatness of your power and now he's about to describe what that looks like. And it's really, to quote me from a couple weeks ago, stunning. These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead. In other words, the power of God that's in you is the very same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. That power is in you. That power is in your spirit if you're born again. The same spirit who raised Jesus Christ from the dead 
is one with your human spirit. Power. Power. It goes on to say, it's not just that raise him from the dead. It's the power that seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. It's the power that caused Jesus Christ not just to be raised from the dead, but the power that caused him to ascend into heaven. You have resurrection power inside of you. You have ascension or ascending power inside of you. The power that raised Jesus from the dead, the power that caused him to be ascended into heaven and be seated at God's right hand is inside of you. Far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come, you have power that is far above every power and principality. You have power in you that's far greater than the devil and his angels. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. The power of God in you is far greater than the devil, no matter what comes against you. His power is far above all power and principality and every demonic spirit. That power is in you. That power is connected to your spirit. That power is one with your spirit. That power is grafted to your spirit in the person of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that incredible? The power that put all things in subjection under his feet, that power is in you. All of your enemies in subjection to your feet. You're meant to reign in life as a king. That's what uh, Romans chapter 5 talks about. The grace of God, those who receive the gift of righteousness and the abundance of his grace will reign in life as a king. You are meant to be an overcomer. And man, do we need overcomers in this day and age, do we not? We need to be the overcomers that God has called us to be. This is a time for overcomers to arise and not be put, not be put under subjection, but to overcome. To overcome the world. And we mentioned that earlier in the prayer time. To overcome the flesh, you. You need power to overcome you. I need power to overcome me. How many of you, if you don't realize that now, you... You may be in some trouble. We, get, we need power to overcome us. That power is inside of you. And power to overcome the devil. And to put him under our feet. Because the power of God is inside of you. All things in subjection under his feet. You're meant to rule in this life. You're meant to reign in life. You're not meant to be overcome. You're meant to, be, to overcome by the very same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now one with your human spirit. There's power in you. There's power in you to rule and to reign. So that's the introduction here that we're going to talk about the power of, of God in you, the power of Christ in you is, you know, we've been focusing in, on the last uh, three sessions about the treasure in you. Which is when you know the treasure that is inside of you, it causes you to live in spiritual wealth. But when you don't know the treasure inside of you, you live in poverty. We mentioned Ira Yates, how he had millions of dollars underneath his feet, but ignorance blinded him and he was living in poverty. Much of the church today is living in poverty because we don't know the treasure that is inside of us. And that's why Paul prayed for revelation to be given to them. You have power inside of you. You have power inside of you because the Holy Spirit dwells there. 
And the very spirit who raised Jesus from the dead and raised him up into heaven and sat him at God's right hand and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and tongue will confess, a name that is far above all rule and power, dominion and authority, and put all things under his feet. That power is in you because he's in you. The power is in a person and he's in you. He's one with your spirit. That means you don't have to struggle. That means you don't have to be overcome. You have everything you need for life and godliness in your spirit. You just need to remember it. You just need to meditate on it. You just need to believe it. Uh, okay, I'm not, again, it's like, I set myself up teaching this way because if I have one moment of a bad day, Anna and Angie are like, oh, wow, you're a little grumpy. Right? You know, it's like, I'm not saying I do this perfect, okay? I need this just like you need this. We all need this. We just need to be remembered and by way of remembrance be stirred up. But God's power is, is in you. The treasure of Jesus Christ is in you. Because God's power is in you, that means you have resurrection power. That means you have creative power. That means you have power for ability to do whatever God has called you to do and to be whoever God has called you to be. And that means you have the kingdom of God inside of you. So we're going to talk about all four, all four of those aspects here in this message. We're going to talk about resurrection power. Just think about this for a second. How the resurrection changed everything. I mean, before the resurrection, the disciples were, you know, Peter was intimidated by a slave girl. Do you know him? I don't know him. Three times. Do you know him? I don't know him. After the resurrection, when he looked upon Jesus raised from the dead, he spoke to the leaders of Israel. And he basically said, in the boldness of the Holy Spirit, you have killed the Messiah. The resurrection changed everything for the disciples. And the resurrection power in you changes everything about you. In the first century, the resurrection turned the world upside down. In the 21st century, resurrection power in you turns your world right side up. Puts everything about your life into order. That power that raised Jesus from the dead is inside of you. The resurrection power of God that transformed the disciples is inside of you. And it will transform you just like it transformed them. His power is inside of you. Now, what does that mean, that power? What does that mean? Let's look at Romans. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, just... just let that register. Let it go beyond the brains trying to figure this out. If you're born again, the brain trying to figure this out and process it. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, does the spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwell inside of you? Hopefully, yes. Yes. If that spirit, not that spirit, if him, the Holy Spirit, who raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you, Paul goes on to say, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. How many people's mortal bodies need a little bit of life? <laughs> I need life in my mortal body, especially as I'm getting older, backs hurting, walking slower, you know, all that stuff, and I need that life of God in my mortal body. But that life of God doesn't just go straight from your spirit to your mortal body. That life of God flows out to your heart. Your heart receiving the life 
of God, the power of God, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, now dwelling inside your heart, his life, his power, the power of God into your soul, into your mind, your will, and your emotions, the power of God into your mortal body. So we become those people that reflect and radiate the very power of Jesus Christ that is inside of us. So you don't have to struggle anymore. You don't have to keep going in circles around and around and around and around with no progress. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is inside of you. The power that raised him from the dead is inside of you. See, if the bones, remember in, in, in 2 Kings 13, 21, the bones of Elisha revived a dead man. How much more the spirit of God who lives inside of you will revive the dead areas in you. When Ezekiel saw the, vi the vision of the valley of the dry bones, he looked and he saw the dry bones and he said, behold, they're very dry and they're dead. And the spirit of God began to breathe life and the bones came alive. Those dry bones in you come to life because the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead is inside of you. Do you need revival? Don't go run here, there, and everywhere. The reviver is inside of you. You don't need to go here, there, and everywhere for revival when you understand the reviver is in you. And he will revive you. He will release power. He will release resurrection life. He will release his, uh, his life-giving anointing to you. Amen. Amen. You still with me? Amen. See, no matter what you have been through, and I, I feel like we've all been through a lot lately since about, you know, 2020, Whatever you've been through, whether it's hope deferred making your heart sick, you, you had this situation that you thought was going to work out one way, and you even thought, okay, maybe God is, you know, you even thought, okay, I, th I believe God's spoken to me about this, and it's going to go this way, and it actually doesn't work the way you thought God had said it would work, and that has caused hope deferred to make your heart sick. Well, God is here to revive you. God wants to release life into those areas inside of you that died. See, all of us have carried some elements in us that have, that have kind of put us to death in a, in a sense. Now, there is, a, there is the work of the cross, but the work of the cross is meant to lead to a resurrection. If you're still crucified and buried, you've only heard two-thirds of the message. The, the last third is the most important because God wants to raise you from the dead in union with the life-giving Spirit of God. He doesn't want you to be stay crucified and buried. He wants to raise you up in union with the life-giving Spirit of God. Don't stay dead. You need to come alive by the Spirit of Christ who raises the dead. See, has any dead things in Are there dead things in you? Hope deferred that makes the heart sick. Disappointments, discouragements. You know, things that you, you know, setbacks, things that have left you doubting and wounded and even perhaps wrestling with your faith. The spirit who raises the dead is inside of you. The spirit who gives life to the dead and the dry things is inside of you. You don't have to be dead and dry on the inside. You can come to life because the spirit of Jesus Christ is inside of you. I want to read something from Indwelling Life. Just again, last week I mentioned how uh, I prophesied over myself, and this week I did it yet again, is page 87. I spoke to myself again. Crazy. But just this week, I can't see. I got, now I see why Dad put it on his forehead, because I can't see you when I look out. How's this? I looked a little nerdy, but... Just this last week, uh, okay, I can see why you did that. Okay, 
Maybe, maybe I'll just do this, okay? So just this last week, this is what happened this last week, and I mentioned this earlier, is the Senate codifying homosexual marriage into law. The heartbeat bill in Georgia was ruled unconstitutional. The G20 leaders met in Bali and said they, they're, they're pushing hard for digital currency. They're pushing hard for uh, uh, vaccine passports to travel internationally. In other words, they're, and, they're not do, and we're not even in a pandemic, so they're not doing that for your health purposes. They're doing it for control. You know, I'll just be honest. This week was like, hey, how's that? This week was... Uh, one of those weeks where you just feel kind of sad and I just be honest, felt sad, sad, just discouraged about where things are going. And so page 87, I was prophesying to myself, maybe the rapid descent of Western culture into gross hedonism has caused your love to grow cold. And I felt that way, honestly. I felt my love growing cold. That's why Jesus warned uh, because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many is going to grow cold. And I felt my heart growing cold, my heart becoming cynical, my heart becoming like despondent, just of, you know, I, I know what Scripture says about the times in which we live, and I've been reading about it for years, but when you actually begin to live through it, it's a very different thing. The emotions that come with it, the discouragement, the hopelessness, the despair. I'm not saying I was like in a fetal position yes, last week. I don't mean it that way. But I, I was, you know, just like my, I could feel my heart growing cold. The, the scarring of the soul from what's happened over the pandemic, the lockdowns, the false media narratives, the political polarization, scarring your soul with anxiety, negativity, and despair. And I, I did. I was like, I felt myself sometimes... Have you ever caught yourself when you're talking and you're just like, man, I sound so negative. Have you ever done that? It's like, I found myself doing that this week where I was just it's like, I sound negative. And Angie's like, you sound negative. <laughs> but I don't think I'm the only one, you know, allowing your heart to grow cynical. How many have struggled with their heart growing cynical? Like, you look out and you see the compromise in the church. You see the, the nations going into rapid hedonism. But here's the good news. Whatever it might be, here's the good news. You have dead raising power in you that raises dead things in your heart, soul, and body to life. You don't have to. I don't have to live in despair you don't have to live in despair. You don't have to be cynical. You don't have to have cold love. In fact, if, if, if the Lord is going to have us be the people he wants us to be in this day and age who shine like the light of God and is a light into culture and salt and light into a culture that's increasingly rejecting God's word, if we're to be salt and light in culture, we need to make sure our love isn't growing cold. We need to make sure that we're not growing cynical, that death hasn't worked inside of us, that, we, that even that we're not being affected by the culture around us. We're a light shining into culture. And it's this very dead-raising power of the Holy Spirit that raises dead things in you to life, that raises dead bones in you to life. So where is it in you that has... Where, whether it's what's going on in the world, whether it's going on in your life, things that have been happened to you that have put you in this place of feeling cynical, cold, hopeless, despairing, you know, just so, uh, slowly kind of becoming grumpy, negative. God wants to raise that. God wants to raise you up so you're not living in negativity. Jesus would not be living in negativity right now, I assure you. He doesn't want us to live in negativity. He wants us to live by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. See, see, just identify what is it in you? Hope crushed, heart cynical, soul wounded, devastated by disappointment, 
rejection, whatever it is, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is inside of you. And he wants to raise dead things in you to life. He wants you to live with his life pulsating out from your innermost being. Amen? Because God's power is in you, you have resurrection life. The second thing that's true, because you have God's power in you, you have creative power inside of you. You have creative power inside of you. If you study creation carefully, you, what you'll find out is Jesus is the one who gave the commands, let there be light, let the waters be created, let the land be formed, let waters be gathered together. But it was the Holy Spirit hovering in dark and formless areas, executing the commands of the Son of God to create. Think about this universe. The God who created this universe is the same spirit who lives in your human spirit. That is stunning. That is stunning. I mean, look around you. Think about some of the most beautiful places you've ever been. You know, for me, it would be Switzerland or Ireland. Just stunning, incredible, I need to think of another word for stunning, incredible, majestic beauty. The same spirit that created all of that is the same spirit grafted to your human spirit. That means you have power to create like the creator. God has called you to be creative. In whatever area he's placed you, whether it's, for me, I, I rely on God's creativity for writing, speaking, leading, uh, software development, and so many other different areas. But wherever God has placed you, you need creativity. You need the creative power of God. God's creative power, no matter what area God has called you to, is inside of you so that you can tap into that creative power. Whether it's doing stuff around the house, whatever it would be, interior design, I don't know what it is, but you can be creative and you're meant to be creative because the creator is inside of you. See, have you ever just taken 10 minutes just to stop and ponder and meditate upon the fact that the one who created the universe is the one who is inside of you. I would encourage you to do that. It's, it's life-changing. Creative power is in your human spirit. Creative power has been grafted to your human spirit. The infinite one who created the cosmos is the intimate one who dwells in your spirit. Just think about that. The infinite one who created the cosmos is the intimate one who dwells in your spirit. Not only do you have resurrection power, you have creative power inside of you. You have power to create like the creator. So wherever it is you need breakthrough, wherever it is you need that power to work, tap into the power of God inside of you. His power will give you the ability to create. Third thing, God's power for ability is in you. You have power for ability. Whatever God has called you to do, Whatever God has called you to do, whoever God has called you to be, that power is inside of you. You have power for ability to be who God calls you to be, and you have power for ability to do what God has called you to do. Let's turn to uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Paul is writing, and again, it's one of those statements that you're like, Wow. Now to him who is able, catch this, Paul said in Ephesians 1, surpassing greatness of his power. Now he says, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly, far more abundantly. God wants to do in your life far more abundantly beyond all that you can ask. 
See, what God wants to do in your life, you can't even fathom how to even ask for it. All that you can even think is what God wants to do is so far beyond that. According to the power that works from heaven coming down on us. Oh, wait, sorry. That's not what it says. It's according to the power that works in us. So much of the church is looking up, saying, God, would you pour out your spirit? Would you pour out your spirit? Now, I'm not against, I mean, I'm t- totally, Pentecost was a historic moment. The spirit of God has been poured out. I believe the spirit will be poured out in the greatest outpouring of the spirit we've ever seen in history before the Lord returns. But I'm not talking about the outpouring of the spirit right now, though I believe in that and can't wait for that to happen and long for it. But Paul's talking about not the spirit outpoured, the spirit in you. We need all all of that. I I want all of it. I want the spirit outpoured and the the indwelling spirit. I want all of that. I'm not going to say I want this or that. I want both. I want both. And I want it in the fullest measure that I could possibly have. But Paul says, according to the power of, that works within us. See, a lot of times we're, we're looking out, we're saying, God, send your power, send your power. And we're expecting the spirit to come upon us like he did in Pentecost. When the Lord is saying, no, the spirit, nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100, the spirit works from within. See, we're looking up, God, do this outwardly, and the Lord's like, no, I'm doing it inwardly. It's by the power that works within you. That power that works within you. Now, when Paul talked about power, he used the word in the Greek that means, it's the word in, in the Greek called dunamis. At its core, this word means strength, power, and ability. It's an inherent power. It's inherent because God, the Holy Spirit, who dwells inside of you, who is one spirit with your human spirit, is a God of power. And your spirit, being one with the Holy Spirit, has inherent power. It's power that resides in a thing by virtue of its nature. It's power that exerts and puts forth from its innate nature. And what this word means in the Greek is when it's expressed in action... It's power for miracles. It's power for moral living and excellence of soul. You could just say Christ-likeness. The power that works mightily within you is the power for Christ-likeness. It's the power for miracles. And it's the power for ability. That power that works mightily within you gives you the power to do miracles. It gives you the power to live a moral life, to live the life of Jesus Christ. It gives you the power to become Christ-like in your heart, in your mind, in your emotions, in your will. And I love the last part. It's the power for ability. Whatever God has called you to do and whoever God has called you to be, You have that power inside of you. See, God has called us to be a bride that is without spot, stain, or wrinkle. Well, how do we become ready? How do we become ready for him and worthy of him? The power that's already in you. That power that is in you gives you the ability to be who God's called you to be. God's called us to be overcoming sons of God that reflect the nature and the beauty of Jesus Christ. Well, how do we do it? It's the power for ability that is in you. God's power for ability gives you 
the ability to overcome where you're struggling. God's power for ability gives you the, the power to overcome the devil, the power to overcome the flesh, the power to overcome the world, the power, the power you need for full deliverance and breakthrough is already in you. That power gives you the ability to be who God's called you to be. The bride makes herself ready. The sons of God overcome. That power in you, the power of the person of the Holy Spirit, gives you the power to overcome and be who God's called you to be. That power for ability gives you the power to do whatever God has called you to do. What has God called you to do? I loved what Dad shared last Sunday, that, 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 that one of the ways we make ourselves ready is to be found so doing whatever God has called us to do. What has God called you to do? He hasn't called you just to sit there and pray and be in your quiet time for hours and hours and hours. He has a kingdom task, a kingdom assignment, a kingdom purpose for you. What is that kingdom assignment, that kingdom purpose God has for you? For me, it's preaching, writing, uh, doing life school, leading a church. Well, God's power gives me the ability to do what he's called me to do. And God's power gives you the ability to do what you are called to do. Tap into the power of God and don't rely on your own strength. Don't rely on your own self. Ephesians or Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. When we've we've uh, quoted that a lot in the church, and it's kind of become one of those familiar verses. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. But that word actually means, that word actually is derived from dunamis, and it means inward strength or inward power. I can do all things through the inward dunamis power of God. Whatever God has called you to do, whoever God has called you to be, even, even the, this church, we are called to be a forerunner ministry in the spirit and the power of Elijah to make way, the, to make way the, the path of the Lord, to make his people ready. That call, that mission is impossible in the natural, but it's possible because of the inward strength of God. The inward strength of God gives you the power to do what God calls you to do and to be who God has called you to be. Amen. Y'all are, are quiet. Staying up too late watching football or something. The fourth thing, thanks Larry for laughing. I appreciate someone laughing. They're showing a pulse. They're still alive. <clears throat> The fourth thing that is true in relation to the power of God is the kingdom of God is within you. Now, Jesus said in Luke 17, verse 21, and I'm quoting in the New King James Version, that the kingdom of God is within you. The New, New American Standard Version says the kingdom of God is in your midst. Now, there is some debate about which translation should be correct. I'm not going to go into the debate in this session, but I mentioned it in my book, The Eternal Blueprint. So go through what's, what the debate is there. But I've come to the conclusion that both translations are actually correct because if Christ the King is inside of you, that would mean the kingdom of God has come in your midst. And if Christ the King is inside of you, that would mean the kingdom of God has now risen inside of you. Because the King is in you, the kingdom of God is in you. And the kingdom of God is that area of dominion, that area of kingdom rule, that area where Jesus is king and Lord. And God, the Lord wants to be Lord. He wants to establish his kingdom in you in totality. That he would truly be the supreme Lord. See, we're, you know, the church is so looking forward to that day, Revelation eleven fifteen, that the kingdom of, of this world will become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. But first, God wants to establish his kingdom in you and in me. Before the kingdom of God comes into this, into this world and takes over and establishes the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, God wants to establish his kingdom rule in you and in me. He wants to be Lord. He wants to be king in every area of your life, with your finances, with your time, with the way you speak, 
with all what you do, with even your profession, with how you parent, with how you are to your, your spouse. Whatever area, Jesus Christ wants to be King of kings and Lord of lords inside of you. And we say amen, and I say amen. And then you read the Sermon on the Mount, and you realize that's what the kingdom of God looks like fleshed out. Hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Loving what God loves, hating what God hates. Being salt and light to a depraved culture that is rejecting the word of God at an increasing rate. Poverty of spirit, poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall see, or blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Purity of heart. That our hearts would be pure to the core. You know, not judging. Do not judge lest you be judged. Don't, don't operate out of a critical spirit. You know, don't do things to be noticed by men and women to be praised. All those things, when you really think about it, that is, Matthew 5 through 7 isn't just hard. Matthew 5 and 7 is absolutely impossible. You can't do it. I can't do it. No one can live that life. That's the life of Christ. That's why we need his life in us to live in the kingdom. To live the Sermon on the Mount lifestyle. Way easier said than done. Impossible for you to do in your own strength. That's why you need the power for, for ability that he gives you because of your, of your union with the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is inside of you because the king is inside of you. The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but it's righteousness, it's peace, and it's joy in the Holy Spirit. We're meant to be filled with the joy of the Lord. Even as all hell breaks out in the culture, even as we enter into the dark times prophesied in the scriptures, deep darkness covering the earth, now more than ever, we've got to be filled with the joy of the Lord. The kingdom of God is joy. The kingdom of God is peace. The kingdom of God is righteousness. Now more than ever, we need that joy. We don't need to be dictated by the culture around us and defining what God says is forbidden in his word, whatever that would be. We need to have that the spirit of God connected to our spirit, transmitting his peace and joy into us, that we would be people of righteousness, people of peace, and people of joy. Amen. This gets me excited. Not sure if you're excited, but I'm excited. Hello. Okay, maybe the people online are a little more saying amen out there. So, so in short, the kingdom of God, I'm just summarizing so much of scripture right here. The kingdom of God is entered at salvation, embodied because we have Christ indwelling life. It's proclaimed as we preach the gospel of the kingdom. It's demonstrated as we operate in God's resurrection power. And it's advanced through prayer, preaching, missions, and ministering in power and spiritual warfare. See, so you have the kingdom of God already because the king dwells in you. You have the kingdom of God already because you have power to heal the sick, cast out devils, and do miracles. You have the kingdom already because the Lamb's reign is being established in your heart and in your soul. But the kingdom of God is now but not yet. The kingdom of God has not yet fully broken into this earth. Revelation eleven fifteen, 15, that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. There is coming a day. And we're moving speedily towards that day. I can't wait. I can't wait until that rock crushes the statues of man's government and the whole statue crumbles and he becomes king of kings and lord of lords and rules the earth for a thousand years. A rule of justice and righteousness and peace 
and glory. And you have a kingdom assignment with him to rule and reign with him in whatever city and authority God gives you. But until that time, his kingdom is being formed within us as the king is being established in us, into our thinking, into our heart, into our desires, into our emotions, into our will, so that his kingdom would come first in a people and then through a people at his coming. See, I'm telling you, the Lord is coming soon. How blessed are the people who wake up and allow the kingdom of God to be formed in them before he comes back. How blessed are the people who allow the Sermon on the Mount to be shaped into them, formed into them, to be those people of purity of heart, those people of poverty of spirit, those people who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those people who are not giving to criti criticism or judgment, who are not doing things to be praised by men, who are going the extra mile, the life of Christ, formed in a people, a kingdom people. Those are the ones who will come back, the called, the chosen, and the faithful. Those are the ones who will inherit the earth. The meek will inherit the earth. Those who have allowed the inward spirit of God to establish the kingdom in them without resistance, without defiance, yielded always to the indwelling spirit that his meekness would be established within us. So in closing, you have God's power already inside of you. That power is surpassing in his greatness. That power is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that raised him up into heaven, that sat him at the right hand of God, that gave him the name above every name. That power is in you so that you can rule and reign in your life over the world, the flesh, and the devil. That power is inside of you. That is resurrection power that you have creative power in you, creative power to create like the creator. Wherever God has called you to do, to create like the creator. You have creative or you have powerful ability to do what God has called you to do, to be who God's called you to be. You have that power, that dunamis power inside of you to be who God wants you to be and you have the kingdom of God inside of you. That that kingdom would be formed in fullness in your heart, soul, and mind so that we can be a kingdom people demonstrating the kingdom of God in this culture in which we live until he comes back in fullness and establishes his kingdom in this earth. All you lack is both the revelation you need that Paul said, the revelation, the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know the surpassing greatness of God's power. And the next thing you need is faith. To believe that power is in you. Because I can get up here and preach all day. I can, I'm not, I'm not going to preach all day, but I can preach all day. And until, that, until this locks into your heart and becomes your own, and your faith is activated to realize I have this power in me, it will do you no good. It'll stay dormant, inactive. You'll have billions of dollars at your disposal, but you'll live in poverty. You need that faith to believe that if Christ Jesus is in you, he's given you that power, that power to, to live in resurrection life, that power to do what God's called you to do and to be who God's called you to be. You have power in you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the power of Jesus Christ that now dwells inside of us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the power of Jesus. The same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of us. We thank you, Lord. Lord, my prayer for all of us, my prayer for all of us, Lord, is that you would open the eyes of our heart so that we might know 
the surpassing greatness of your power toward us who believe. Lord, let us not live and, and wallow around in doubt and unbelief. But Lord, let us believe. Let us believe, Father, what you have done. I pray faith would awaken in our hearts. Acknowledge every good thing in you so that your faith may become operative. I pray, Lord, that we would, we would practice meditation, of meditating on these truths, meditating on the incredible things you've done, that our faith would be activated, our faith would be energized, our faith would be operative, that we would not live in doubt and unbelief. Father, may we live the overcoming life by living every day by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, even in our weakness. Lord, your power is made perfect in weakness. Whatever tribulation, trial, affliction, weakness we're going through, Lord, your power is then perfected within us. And I pray we would live by that power, the power of God. I pray, Lord, release. I pray for everyone listening right now, Lord, that you would strengthen every one of us by the very power of God, the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Lord, would you release that power into our spirit that we would have the power for ability, the power to live like Christ. I just pray, strengthen us. I just pray corporately, Lord, where we have, where some have experienced hope deferred, where some have experienced setbacks, where some have experienced death, Lord, where some have experienced disappointments, despondency, depression. Lord, that your power, oh, the power of God that overcomes those things. Lord, would you allow the power of God to be released from the inside out to overcome those things that have afflicted people, those things that have affected people, hope deferred that has made the heart sick, disappointments, setbacks. Lord, would you release the power of God to enable them to overcome and to have life into dead areas, life where there has been a descent into depression. Lord, even, I just even sense right now there's been some who have, who, who have gone into a, play, a state of depression. And I just say, I just say the word of the Lord to you is you don't have to live in that place of depression any longer. You don't have to live believing those things any longer. You don't have to live filling down. The power of God inside of you is enough to strengthen you and to overcome your depression and to overcome that feeling of being downcast. You have the power of Jesus Christ inside of you, surpassing greatness of his power to overcome gloom and, de and just depression. You have power to set you free. Even in the rare area of anxiety that we're, uh, some have experienced anxiety and worry over certain things and situations that has really affected you. I just say you have the power of God to not live in that anxiety anymore. You have the power of God in you to overcome that anxiety and that fear. God's power in you is greater than your anxiety and fear you are experiencing. Lord, even where some have experienced premature death in loved ones, Lord, I just pray the power, and that, and that has worked some measure of death into their heart and soul. Lord, I pray. Lord, there is a time of grieving. There is a time of grieving. There is a time of grieving. But I pray, Lord, for the power of Christ. Lord, when that time of grieving is over, that the power of Jesus Christ, Lord, would not allow death to be death in them. That there would be life released, I pray. Again, there's a time of grieving. And when that grieving is over, grieving beyond the time, Lord, I just pray that the power of Jesus right now would touch 
those areas. Lord, where some have experienced setbacks financially or even related into their health, and that's affected them emotionally, Lord, with depression and anxiety, even cynicism. Lord, I pray for the power of God right now to touch them, strengthen them. Lord, that they would not live in that defeat. They would not live in that despair. Lord, where some have been entangled in the stronghold of sin and they've tried and tried and tried, yet they still stumble in sin and they're entangled in a stronghold. Lord, I pray the power of God would set them free. The power of God would set them free. Lord, I pray even in the areas of relationships, even dreading Thanksgiving because they know they're going to get together with family and they know it's going to bring up sore areas that may have not fully healed, even areas that produce death. Lord, I pray the power of God right now to be released into those areas for healing, for healing, that there would be restoration even among family members and healing by your power. Lord, I pray for those that have been so focused on the negative things that are happening in this earth, and there's many things to be focused on, even related to what Scriptures talk about the end of the age, and we need to know those things. But it's become even a place or an area of anxiety and fear and a triggering mechanism that triggers and offends. Lord, I pray your power would be released from the inside of them right now to overcome that negative emotion, those negative emotions of fear, anxiety, and worry, and dread. God has called you for such a time as this. God has called you for this very hour. You are here for this very moment. Don't run and don't retreat. Overcome and stand by the power of God. Lord, even where even where there's been family members where we have been trying to witness to and bring them along to where we're at. And maybe they're not even saved. Maybe they're, they're saved, but they're lukewarm and they don't want to hear those things we're saying. And it's created this tension and stress and even this negativity and not knowing how to respond and how to live. I just pray the power of God right there in those areas to be released right now. Lord, I pray right now where hope deferred has made the heart sick, where even they thought you said one thing and it ended up being, a, Lord, the, it didn't come to pass like they thought you said it would. And it's created disappointment, disillusionment, despondency. I believe that today there is a reviving for you, a revival for you. The reviver inside of you, reviving you from the inside out with his power to overcome. Just receive right now. Just receive right now the power of God. Just receive the power of God. The power of God. Father, I pray also where your church has gone into the corner afraid to confront, afraid to be the bold witness we're called to be, speaking the truth in love, speaking the truth in grace. Because where the fear of man has captured us and we've become a slave to the opinions of men rather than the bond slaves of Jesus Christ, may the power of God come and strengthen us from the inside out to be that bold witness, that testimony that we must be in this day and hour of darkness of crookedness, of lawlessness. Lord, may your power strengthen us from the inside out to be the bold witnesses you called us to be. 
Lord, we pray that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say amen. Just say amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We can end the, uh, the recording now. God bless you. Have an awesome Thanksgiving, everyone watching us online. Hope your Thanksgiving's awesome, especially now with those prayers. Just don't talk politics. Our eschatology. All right. So, God bless. Let's, let's, uh, let's just wait on the Lord for a second. Just stand. See if the Lord wants to do any ministry. Dad, why don't you come up here kindly? Just wait. Wait on the Lord. If you feel like you need ministry in, in one of those areas I called on, I know we pray corporately for those things, but if any of those areas you feel like you need more ministry, then just want to encourage you to, for, to come up and we're going to pray for you. Even if you've had prayer in those areas, sometimes it's like peeling the layers of an onion. Just, just it takes time just to, just to, just for God's power to, to work and to penetrate. So if you feel like you need prayer, <clears throat> to be revived in places of death, places where death has worked, places of despair, cynicism, uh, defeat, and things like that. If you need prayer for any of that, just want to encourage you to come up front. We're going to pray along those lines. <laughs> Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. She alamaka yende alamaka. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh. She alamaka yede beyonda. She alamaka yede beyonda. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do you have anything to share about? I'm not sure if this is a word or not. Uh, this is for physical healing. Um, the older I get, the more I have aches and pains, so it's hard to, de hard to detect whether it's a word of knowledge or just a normal ache and pain. But I did, at the beginning of the worship, I was getting s that somebody is struggling with something, uh, with a, maybe it's a pain or an issue uh, right in this area of their body, somewhere like th that. If there's anybody like that, um, come up and we want to pray, just pray for you, or you can just raise your hand and we can pray for you there. Um, anybody with that? You don't have to come up if you just, it, but I, I don't want to, if nobody has that, it's fine, but I mean, uh, if you do have somebody, just raise your hand where you are and we'll, we'll just pray for you where you are. Um, I'm going to pray for Quentin after the service, but just uh, we'll end there. Or do you have anything else to share? Uh, just uh, announcement. Yeah, just announcement. So, <clears throat> yeah, just real quick. Um,